I just want to talk about the power of speaking your truth. Now, this is very important because I feel when you truly say what's on your heart and you follow that direction and you say what needs to be said, even if it is just disturbingly uncomfortable and you move in that direction boldly, I'm not saying from a cynical, evil standpoint, you're speaking your truth where something is overtaking you because I do believe in good, the bad, light, the evil, and a lot of us are overcome with darkness. This world is very dark and there's a lot of things in this world that can overtake you. If you ain't on the defense and protecting your energy, your mind, and all of those things. So we can be overcome by thoughts that aren't our own. And if you act in that truth, that's not really your truth. The truth is the purity of yourself, the purity of your heart when you're in a childlike state. And when you can speak that truth, what you truly believe, and you can open up yourself and be vulnerable because the enemy stands no chance because you walk with God. When you can speak from that place, you're not afraid, and you can truly move boldly in that direction. It sets you free and it also sets the other people free because nobody's speaking truth. Like everybody is hiding behind a front or they're doing what works or they're copying and pasting themselves to be like somebody else. Everything is a fraud. Everything is a front. And when you can truly be yourself, that is when you will set sail and you will walk the path that God has laid out for you. And there won't be as many obstacles. There won't be as many challenges. It will just feel right. It will feel like you are in the swing of things. You will feel like you're not battling to make things happen. In my life, I've noticed when I've done things that were trendy, like whether, let's just say a Shopify store. Like I started a business where I was doing a Shopify store and selling items and it went wrong and I owed a whole bunch of money and just things like that where I'm following the culture or doing things that are outside of myself to make money. And I'm not saying don't become valuable and throw yourself into the market because that's not you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying truly tap into what was made for you and it will obviously inevitably become successful because it was made for you. That's what your heart longs for. So clearly that is the path for you. You just got to go about it the correct way and not duplicate something else or go off into some other direction because it will always blow up in your face and it won't feel authentic and God just won't allow it. And that's how God operates when you're not authentic to yourself, when you're trying something else or you're putting on a front, it will never work out. And I'm not just saying material wise and money wise, I'm saying spiritually, you, yourself, your spirit, your soul, it won't work out in there. You will feel miserable. When it comes to YouTube, when I was doing those huge crazy videos, that's the fastest way to grow. But spiritually, obviously it wasn't the best way to go for me and I would have self-destructed five years down the line because I truly wasn't passionate about it. I wouldn't have been successful even if it was successful. So really just follow your heart and walk in that path and that direction and the truth will set you free when you follow your truth. The path will unfold. You will bring around the right people. You won't have counterfeits. You'll have genuine real people who are meant to be there. And you're not living in a lie. You don't have this fake exterior or this shield or this glaze over your eyes where it's illusion. It's a lie. It's not truly what you want but you're there because culture calls for it or some external thing calls for it. No, this is truly all you. This is truly you because it's your truth. And the people who don't believe in your truth, they will back away. They will fall away. And you can just keep moving in that direction. And that is one of the biggest struggles in this world is figuring out what your purpose is. Literally went through mental warfare time and time and time again trying to figure out what my purpose is. And I know a lot of men and women struggle with this and it's hard to navigate where you should go or why you're on this earth or what's true and what's what's false and where I need to be in all of these things because Satan is the master of confusion and you got to understand that there is good there is light there is bad there is wicked there's yin and yang there's God there's Satan so you got to understand your enemy we all have a purpose on earth but there is a purpose on the opposing side because purpose is something that is positive purpose is something that gives us fulfillment and we all realize that there is true evil in this world and there is an opposing side and purpose is literally why you are here it's what wakes you up in the morning it's what gives you drive and the opposing side wants to strip that away from you it wants to distract you by lust by fornication by drinking by smoking by having the wrong people in your circle that deter you and drag you away from your path to where it becomes cloudy to where you can't see the light anymore that is the enemy's job is to rob you of your future i'll be honest and i'll be open i was at a cabin and I was just going through him. I was very depressed. I was in my emotions and I wanted to off myself. I was just done with living in this world because I was making music at the time and I couldn't figure out my purpose and I was going back to work and I was just so caught up in my mind. My negative energy is really just out of line and that's kind of what I've been dipping into. I've been trying to clear it but it's just not going away, okay? Literally stayed in my bed, wasted away my life staring at the wall, watching YouTube videos and I just fucking just went into a slump and I didn't really move. I didn't really do nothing. Really nothing to do out here. 
besides the view and the music. That's truly how much I love music. It just makes everything in my life that much better. And I couldn't make sense of anything, and I was like, you know what, if I don't have a purpose, if I'm just literally gonna work until I'm gone, because I feel like innately inside of me that I'm meant for more, but I'm just doing this, like, if that's all God has planned for me, then I'm gonna off myself. And obviously, I was motivated by the enemy. Like, something overtook me that was not of God. I've opened myself up somehow, some way to the enemy by being unconscious and let that energy, that dark energy, that thought pattern that would lead me to go off myself, I let that in myself somehow, some way, by not being connected to God, obviously, or deep in the scriptures, or deep with my Lord and my Father. So by being open to that, just had visions. I'm just gonna be honest, I just had visions of crashing my vehicle in front of a semi, and it was just on repeat. Now, obviously, that is from the enemy. Like, I don't even know how a normal person or why a normal person would want to do that. It just doesn't make sense. I just had visions of doing that repetitively, and obviously, I wasn't gonna do it. This was at the time when I had the most money in my life. I had a beautiful home. I had a Hummer H2 on the exterior, I had everything that I wanted. I literally had everything I wanted and I so-called manifested. And I felt miserable inside. So I had these visions and I wasn't gonna do it. I just really felt like doing it. Subconsciously, I guess I led myself in that direction. I wasn't paying attention. I was on my phone for a split second. I looked up. My vehicle was sideways and it started rolling. Luckily, I survived. Well, I broke my back. Fractured my back and I walked out of that completely unscathed and fine. And that was me wrestling to try to figure out what my purpose was. I was so fed up to the point where I didn't want to be here. And I've had not a lot of moments like that where it was that extreme, but I was just so caught up in my mind trying to figure out why I was here. And something like that will never ever happen again because I'm connected to God now. Like I got my Bible. I know what's going on in the world. I know that there is a true pure evil in this world. And we are vessels. We are energy that can be overtaken if we don't protect, guard our minds and our spirit. If we don't have discernment with what we watch or the people that we let in our lives, like you got to understand understand that there is a true wickedness to this world. There is people who are possessed by Satan. Some people are literally sent into your life to destroy you. Have you ever noticed that somebody has just came into your life only to do harm and when everything was said and done, when everything was destroyed, they were gone and they vanished and they were never to be seen again? You just overcame something, whether it's vaping and now you're around people who are constantly vaping 24-7. You've just overcome something and now the enemy is sending in a person who could try to bring that bad habit up inside of you really got to be conscious and you got to be aware and that's what the bible has done it showed me the enemy's tactics my issue was mostly with just females this was one of the ways that the enemy had access to my life i would never have discernment or analyze the spiritual side or just the mindset and the personality types of the chicks that i was bringing in so freaking quick into my life i'd just be like okay she's fine she's hot she could be my girlfriend that is me not having discernment not being wise and literally pulling the enemy in what the enemy will do he will use any vessel have you ever heard of a jezebel spirit okay you bring a female into your life and that could be a jezebel spirit this is where a lot of men and a lot of women fall short and they miss their purpose or they don't quite live to be the person that their heart desires to be and they have to realize that there is a spiritual warfare going on that there is truly evil a lot of people waste their lives or they get caught in these traps or these deep depressions or they get enslaved by the enemy first and foremost because they don't believe there is an enemy they don't believe it exists they are unconscious and they are unaware of its tactics to where they fall short they're just like oh i just have depression oh i'm just sad oh i just feel angry oh i just got lost on my path and i don't know where i'm going and oh now i'm just confused and that's how they lived and before i truly had this wisdom i would always just be like it's depression oh i just was with the wrong person Oh, this happened. Oh, I'm drained. Like I was doing good and I just got knocked off my path. Oh, I just fell short. And you got to realize that the enemy is there to make you stumble. The enemy is there to attack you. If you have a purpose, if you have a goal, if you have a vision, if you have a plan, if you have a good dream of well-being for your family or anything that is positive, the enemy is always working overtime to attack you. And you got to understand that we are just vessels. We are just energy. There's dark energy. There's positive energy. Like it says in the Bible, Satan is a devourer of of soul. For me, my chink in my armor, my weakness was females because I was like, oh, well, she's hot. Automatically, she can be my girlfriend. She can be right beside me. And if I was Satan, that would be amazing. And for me, this is what gave me wisdom in my life. And this is also what made me slip up on my purpose and what truly opened up my eyes to what is actually going on, the spiritual warfare. And it happened to do with females. So I thought in my mind, if she is good looking, if she has a great appearance, she must be perfect thing to be in a relationship she must be mrs right that must be what it is and a lot of guys are blind in this regard the bible highly warns you about women who are 
like this seductive Jezebel spirits, demonic spirits. This is somebody you don't want to be with. First and foremost, they are craving attention. They probably got 10 guys in their phones and they're all about the dopamine so they will cheat on you and then they'll break up with you and they'll try to ruin your reputation and it will all go downhill and they will gossip and they will slander and it's just a wicked woman that you don't want to be a part of and it's mostly associated with the chicks who are very promiscuous, who are always online. That's what I've noticed in my life and this is what truly gave me wisdom about the enemy in the Bible. Warns brothers of faith, you know, people who follow Christ to stray away from this type of female and without that knowledge, without that wisdom, without that discernment, you would keep falling into this trap until you were like an ox going to slaughter because it only gets worse. You keep falling for these girls and it only gets worse and I'll give you an example. So I was with this chick only because she was hot. That was the only reason and she just wanted SEX way too much and I was just depleted spiritually. I was tapped into my purpose at the time like I was really focused on what I was supposed to be doing on planet earth. I was really zoned in. She would always be closing my laptop. Oh, it's time for lust. Oh, it's time for lust and when I would do that it would destroy my clarity, deplete my spirit. Just my spirit felt drained and I felt I didn't want to follow my purpose anymore or follow God and I strayed away from God. Many things that the enemy will do to try to get in your mind. There was nights when she would forcefully try to make me vape like crazy, blowing it in my face like mad disrespectful and just like trying to get me to drink. Trying to give me all these bad vices and these bad habits. The devil was like here and vaping was something that I struggled with so severely since I was in high school to like a couple years ago. It took an actual car accident for me to finally give up vaping. It was something that was so attached to me and I was so addicted and I couldn't give it up. And by the grace of God, I guess after that car accident, I humbled myself and I started talking to God and like he broke me from chains, like things I couldn't escape. Like vaping was one thing that I could never give up. I would literally tell everyone I'm gonna give up. I would throw it away. The next day you would see me with a bigger device. I'm straying away from this. I'm quitting. I'm never doing this again. It's, you know, doing these things to my lungs and I'm getting brain fog and the next day I would have another device. I would always say I'm quitting and it would never happen and luckily God freed me from that. And this is when I started to wisen up and realize that there is an enemy who wants to destroy your path, who wants to see you suffer, who wants to snatch your soul and take you off your purpose and lead you astray from your path and lead you into misery and chain you up and leave you in bondage. You see it in this world with so many of the young people and just how they're living. They are operating without God. But this is when I truly realized it. I was sitting on a bed and this person was being super lustful like day in and day out just constantly wanting to have SEX like all the time and I was just depleted. I was drained like my spirit was just so off track and I literally just lost sight of what I was doing and my purpose and every time I try to go and do my thing it would close the laptop and I couldn't even focus. I just lost clarity and I lost purpose and I lost my motivation and I lost my drive and I lost my will due to lust. Like I lost so many things. I lost my enthusiasm and it was just being sucked out of me and drained out of me and when I was done the thing was like I'm done with you and that's how the enemy operates. That's how it wants you and that's why lust can be so dangerous. There was one time when I was sitting on this bed it was attacking me with all things and I'm not saying that person because we don't fight against people. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against principalities. That's what you're fighting against. You're not fighting against the person. It's not a bad person. It's just whatever's inside of them is bad. It's evil. So I brought on the wrong person because it was attracted or it was brought in by lust. I don't like the word attraction, but it was brought in by lust, not discernment. There wasn't like a mental connection there. It was physical and that's how you can draw in the enemy to your camp. I was being attacked on all angles. Like it was trying to force me to vape, blowing vape clouds in my face. And I was literally fighting the temptation not to vape. It was trying to make me drink and I was like, nah, I'm not having it. Like I don't even drink at all. And then it was tempting me with lust, like shaking and doing all these crazy things. And I'm like, all right, like this is insane. I mean, I broke free from that and I really got closer to God and I noticed on that path that the enemy was really just not that person, but like other scenarios, like everything else was just attacking me full force. And it was mostly when I was getting close to God. That's when I noticed it really picked up and it kicked off. Now it's not so much because I don't fold, I don't bend, I don't give into these things. But at first I was easily led astray or led off course. And that's when the enemy will really pick up steam and attack you on all sides. And you will really know that like if you're an atheist crossing over to becoming a believer, like believe that there's going to be a lot of warfare because the enemy wants to keep you in bondage. He wants to keep you a slave. He wants to keep you on in that darkness. He doesn't want you in the light. He doesn't want you being free. He doesn't want you spreading good into the world. He doesn't want you sharing God's kingdom or being on that side. So that's when I felt personally that the tax were the strongest. Whenever I went through something, it brought me closer to God. Mm -hmm. And I stayed into something. So now I'm closer to God. 
but being close to his heart. The attacks get strong, become much harder to fight, and they last long. But it also gave me a great deal of wisdom and discernment for the spirits that I allow in my life. But anyways, closing that chapter and closing that book, I appreciate all of that because it gave me wisdom for the future of my life and how to maneuver and how to navigate. So I'm forever grateful for everything that happens in my life, the good, the bad, the negative. Because if you're just a Catholic boy who was born into a great household where everything was fantastic, that is fine, that is good, but you truly don't know the power of God. But when you are thrown into the enemy's camp and you have been there and you know the enemy's tactics and you really know the mindset or just the energies or just how the devil likes to trick and deceive and lead you astray and what he uses, the pitfalls of the trap, you really become a lot wiser and you become a more powerful force. And that's what brought me to God is just a lot of sins and just falling into the wrong thing time and time again and just desperately looking for that purpose, being tired of running and stumbling and failing. One of the promises of God is that he will keep you running and you won't stumble because you will have discernment. You will know how to maneuver. You will know who to bring in your circle. You have wisdom like you've never had before. That was one of the biggest things is just finding my purpose. And when I was growing up, I was always just extremely spiritual. I was that weird spiritual guy. It's not something that I wanted to be or I went out of my way to like go play with crystals and I was in my room doing these weird things. I was just very experimental and I was trying to figure out why I'm here, what I could do with my mind. And I was just very tapped in with like weird artists. Like I always related to XXXXX, not because he was just some weird demonic dude, but because he was always speaking about very deep philosophical things. Now that I'm looking at it, it's because I was always meant to find the Bible. The last book that I finally picked up in my stack of books was the Bible. For that, I was into all of the spiritual things. I was really trying to find the real meaning for my whole life. So I was you know, into this stuff, manifestation, using the power of your mind, the law of attraction, and thinking a certain way. Your subconscious brain can change your life. Raise your vibrations. 111 practices to increase your spiritual connection. The power of now. The magic. Use your subconscious mind. And a whole bunch of different other books. I had the crystals. I literally went through all of that new age BS. And the last thing that I picked up, I don't even know where I got these from. They just appeared in my life. The last thing that I picked up out of these stacks of books was the Bible. I'll be honest and I'll be truthful. I thought it was boring. I didn't want to read it. I was like, I'm always going to get around to it. But it's funny how the thing that actually held the truth and what was going to give me purpose and fulfillment and make me the man that I've always wanted to become and everything that I was ever looking for was the last thing that I checked. Very funny and ironic, but it kind of makes sense because that's how the enemy wants you to operate. He wants you to go in cycles. He wants you to miss the mark. He wants you to waste time. He wants you to be on autopilot. He doesn't want you finding the truth. And that's what I did for a majority of my life. I just running around these dances of trying to manifest or meditate or the power of the mind being positive and all these things. I truly do believe being positive is great, but there's only so much power in being positive. It's not the power of God because there is an enemy and the enemy's attacking you. What is that going to do? If you're just positive and you're faking everything, you're not really conscious and aware to what the real world actually is. A lot of this stuff is witchcraft. It's demonic and you don't want to open yourself up to this because when you are being given power or you feel like you are manifesting or meditating or tapping into these different realms, you are opening yourself up to the spirit realm. You're opening yourself up to the energies of this world. Like when you're in a trance-like state and you're in a meditation or doing Reiki or you're doing these things, you are opening up your vessel to whatever is around you. And it's not a great idea. And the Bible even warns about these things. With the way that this world is going, you don't want to open your mind up to that stuff because you could open up doorways, you could open up pathways that could ruin relationships, that could cause envy in yourself or anger or these weird emotions. You're opening up doorways that would cause devastation in your life and you won't know why. It will just be there. It will spawn out of somewhere. You'll be like, why did I just pick up this weird personality trait? It was positive and it was good at first. I was manifesting good things, but now I'm greedy and now my family doesn't want to talk to me. Like you are opening up yourself to things that you have no idea about and it's not a great idea. Just read the Bible. Start from there. The enemy will always lead you away from the truth. So you got to look inside of yourself and be like, you know what? Maybe I don't like religion or I don't like this because the enemy is inside of me and it doesn't want me to be in that direction. And that's what I figured out and found out for myself is that I was always in loops. People would be like, oh, you're a star child. You're an indigo child. You're this, you're that. And I've always felt like that was, you know, maybe half true. I felt like, okay, that kind of makes a little more sense because I do feel different than literally majority of the people, but that's not my truth. Like I was always trying to find it and I could never find it, but now I finally did. Yeah, I'm just very glad that I picked the right side because this stuff leads into weirder things over time. This crystal is protecting my energy. Okay, this crystal is trapping all my negative energy. Okay, this book worked and is doing
really well and then you just go down the line and you're doing more and you're doing more and then you're meditating and you're opening yourself up and you're doing more and more and more and where does that lead to not to god you're trying to get power from something else that is not of god but where are you getting that power from what are you opening yourself up to so you really got to be careful because you don't want to be doing witchcraft you don't want to be opening yourself up to any of those things especially in this day and age but what's crazy to me is a week before that accident i was doing reiki healing just because i was looking for the meaning of life i was looking for purpose i was in a stage of self-actualization trying to figure out who i am what i am why i'm here all of those kind of questions and trying to get some answers and i'm still in that stage but i'm in the right direction and i feel it and i know it back then i was just confused like the devil was doing a whole bunch of different things and i was really just in a maze trying to figure out something that could never be figured out and trying to find a truth that would never have been found but yeah we were doing tarot cards and reiki healing and she had these weird things on my back and she would put me like in a trance like state but yeah she would just bring up these things that were oddly personal that you couldn't find on social media or facebook or any of these things and i'm like how did you know that like that is so odd and i was just in it like a trance like state and she was reading tarot cards and doing all these things and asking questions and telling me how i should proceed in life and how i should go about things and how i should navigate my emotions and how i should feel and what's going to happen in the future and it's just demonic it really is demonic and that's why god forbids of doing any of these things because first and foremost you were opening up your temple you were opening up your spirit to the unknown you have no idea what that lady is doing or what witchcraft or what the heck is going on okay so this is just for me to retain all the information that i picked up on when i went to the reiki therapy session i'm gonna briefly summarize everything she wanted me to stick with and to go over Pretty much yeah that'll make me better at manifesting spirit guide guarding energy like you have a cloak on a black cloak a cloak over you that's protecting you and you can call upon your angels your support team and just to connect with them even more Hold over just helping out oh yeah because i was one of the first and that information that she is giving you it's from some demonic spirit some familiar spirit that is giving her a little bit of information because the devil only knows about your past and he can only bring up certain things and then he wants you to get locked on the truth and then you go down this weird spiral to where you're opening up yourself even more you're opening up doorways you're opening up generational curses you're opening up portals but trust me once you follow god you will realize that there is a lot of things in your family that you need to fix in yourself that you need to fix and you will actually start fighting against those spirits if you want to make change, if you want to progress in a positive direction, and you want to get closer to God, you will start to see generational curses. You will start to see the blocks, the entities that are controlling the people in your family. And also, one scripture in the Bible could completely dismantle every single one of these books to make it a complete waste of time. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. Okay, so just seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. So you don't need to manifest money because if you become a righteous individual god will grant you with everything that you need so all of these books are absolutely useless and all of these men were created by god so therefore why listen to them they will all lead you astray and man will always lead you wrong but god will never lead you wrong Think I made this thing right here? You think you got me? I know this pain right here. You'll never stop me. Cause I got the king right here.